Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and in this video, I shall be showing you how to create your own custom playback templates so that you can define what sounds are used to play back different instruments and then recall that setup for any future project in Dorico 3, the advanced music notation software from Steinberg. Playback templates are how Dorico stores all the information about which sounds to use when playing back the instruments in your project. For each instrument you add, they know what VST sounds must be loaded with which settings. And they know how to route the relevant information about articulations and playing techniques in your score to the correct sounds by way of VST expression maps. Dorico has always used playback templates to load automatically the sounds from the bundled Halion Sonic SE and Halion Symphonic Orchestra libraries. Now, when you have created a setup of sounds and routing that you like, you can save it to use in other projects. You can even combine them to make even more powerful templates. Let's walk through the process. I'm going to start by loading a new empty project. And if I open the Preferences dialog and switch to the Play page, we can see that Dorico will be using the HSSE plus HSO playback template for this and all new projects, HSSE being Halion Sonic SE and HSO being Halion Symphonic Orchestra. So let's add a few instruments. I'll use Add Ensemble to get us started quickly and choose a four-part choir. Switching to play mode and opening the Halion Sonic SE in the VST panel will show us that Dorico has loaded the Sustain R patch from the Olympus Choir Micro Library by Soundiron included with Dorico 3. Each vocal instrument has been routed to its own slot in the VST. These sounds are great, and for the music I'm working on for the moment, I'd love to use the Gregorian program. So I'll replace each instance of the Sustain R. I also particularly like using the OO sustain articulation as it holds on longer than the marcato. So I'm making that change to the presets. Now for this example, I don't need to make any changes to the expression maps in use, but I could do this and then use the endpoint setup dialog to ensure the correct maps are being used. With all that set up, I can now press this save endpoint configuration button give it a recognizable name, let's say Gregorian Sustain Vocals, and press OK. The endpoint configuration is all the data I have set up here, with soprano, alto, tenor, and bass vocal instruments being routed to individual instances of the Olympus Choir set to the exact sound I like. Now let's use this endpoint configuration to create a custom playback template. In the Play menu, choose Playback Templates. The Playback Template currently in use is selected. I can choose another Playback Template in the list and apply it to the current project, either by pressing the button or by double-clicking the entry in the list. Any automatic Playback Templates that are installed will show this factory icon. These are the templates that have shipped with Dorico and others like this one that controls playback for Note Performer. The factory templates cannot be edited. Let's create a new template by pressing the Add button. Firstly, I can give my template a name. Use this to easily identify it. This template will use the Gregorian vocal sounds that I just set up, and then for any other instruments, use the default sounds Dorico would ordinarily choose. So I'm going to call it something like Gregorian plus HSO. The rest of these fields don't need to be filled out, but if you're going to be sharing the template with others, you may wish to add some information about it, and you could perhaps increase the version number when you edit it. Now we're at the crucial part, where we tell Dorico which sounds to load, and we do this by way of an ordered list of endpoint configurations and other playback templates. Dorico will start at the top of the list, and allocate sounds for the instrument it has in the current project in descending order of preference. We know we want Dorico to use the Gregorian sounds for vocal instruments, so we click Add Manual 
and choose our new Gregorian sustain vocals configuration. And then click on automatic and choose the HSSE plus HSO template, which is the template Dorico is using by default. So what will happen here is that Dorico will look at each instrument in the project in turn and then look at the first item in the list to see if there is any playback information it can use. If there isn't, it will carry on to the next item in the list and so on. To show you this in action, I'll OK the dialog as there's nothing more we need to add and then load this project for soprano and piano. Let's switch to play mode and open the playback templates dialog. Let's just look at our new Gregorian plus HSO template again so we can see what's going to happen when we apply it to the project. Firstly, Dorico will look for playback information about the soprano, which it will find in the Gregorian sustain vocals. Great. Then it will take the piano, but it won't find anything about a piano in that configuration, so it will move on to the next item in the list. And of course, the HSSE plus HSO template does have the information it needs to know how to play back a piano instrument. It's always good to use a fallback like this so that you can be sure that Dorico will always be able to play back every instrument in your project. Let's click Apply and Close. And now Dorico will replace the playback setup, including any loaded VSTs, with everything it needs to play back the soprano and piano in this project. And if we disclose these two players and open the Halion Sonic SE instance in the panel, we can see that Dorico has loaded the Gregorian sound with the amended articulation, and it's sending the soprano to it on channel 1. And it's also loaded the default piano sound into slot 5, and is routing the piano instrument accordingly. Let's do one more quick setup to go over that process again. This time, I just want to save an endpoint configuration for the Raven piano sound found in the Halion 6 library. I don't wish to save any information about the soprano instrument playback, so I'll remove that player from the project. Back in play mode, I'm going to delete the loaded Halion Sonic SE VST and instead fire up an instance of Halion Sonic. From here, I'm going to find the Raven library and load this gorgeous piano sound. Let's make sure the piano instrument is being correctly routed to the exact slot into which I just loaded the piano sound, and then save the endpoint configuration as Raven Piano. Now let's create a new playback template, and this time we'll give it the Raven Piano plus the Gregorian vocals, and I'd also like to use the brass sounds from Note Performer. So I'll add Note Performer, and in the Family Override section, I'll choose Brass. This means that only the brass sounds from Note Performer will be used. I could get even more specific and choose individual instruments. Generally speaking, you only need to do this if you are going to be including multiple configurations here in the list that refer to the same instruments. Finally, I'll add HSSE plus HSO as my fallback. Give it a name and press OK. I'll apply the template and then come back to setup mode to add a few more players. Let's add a tenor vocal and a horn. And then let's add a string section. OK, we can switch back to play mode and see what sounds Dorico has loaded. We have our Halion Sonic loaded for the piano. Then an instance of Halion Sonic SE has been loaded with the vocal and string sounds and an instance of Note Performer here for the horn. If you wish, you can set one of your custom playback templates to be used by all new projects, which you do in Preferences on the Play page. I mentioned earlier that on some occasions you may need to modify the VST expression maps, perhaps in order to get the control you need for a particular sound library. Dorico 3 brings some improvements to expression maps, including the option to use a secondary dynamic control. 
This is utilized by the Sound Iron Olympus Choir Library that is included with Doric 03, as those sounds use a combination of note velocity and MIDI control changes to affect volume dynamics. As well as using control changes and key switches to change sounds, you can now assign a channel change for libraries that load different articulations into different slots, and then let playing techniques in your score switch the channel they play back on, and you can set them up as relative channel changes, so you don't need to be precise about exactly which channel the first articulation for an instrument set is loaded into. Finally, you can now define mutual exclusion groups to force playing techniques in the same group to be removed. For example, the string techniques arco and pizzicato are mutually exclusive, as generally speaking, you cannot bow and pluck a string at the same time. Different types of brass mutes would be another example. Now, by setting up your own mutual exclusion groups in an expression map for sounds in your library, you can help influence the way Dorico plays back certain techniques. I do hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please click the thumbs up button below to let me know you've liked it. And subscribe to the Dorico YouTube channel today to see many more videos like this one. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.